Hi, I'm Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. Imagine a U.S. president presiding over a country in major economic decline. Sales tax revenues plunging dramatically in California, the bellwether state. Unemployment worse every month, including nine of ten battleground states. Help wanted ads down dramatically. Petroleum sales, the foundation of our economy, sinking like a rock. GDP, anemic. The real estate crash, worse than the peak of the Great Depression. 40% of the net assets of the average American gone. Prices for food and gas skyrocketing. And suicides going up so fast, they now outnumber deaths from car accident. Imagine that. It's unthinkable. Now throw in a Middle East in flames. The first U.S. ambassador murdered in over 30 years. Rioting and violence towards America in virtually every Middle East country. And Muslims burning with hatred for America as a direct result of the policies of appeasement and apology of the incumbent U.S. president. Now imagine, in the face of all of that, the mainstream media claiming things are getting better, refusing to challenge the president when he repeats over and over again the lie that we are in recovery, and viciously attacking the presidential challenger for daring to criticize the incumbent president with all of this going on. You'd be insane <clears throat> to picture that set of circumstances, right? Could never happen. Sadly, it's happening right now. Hollywood executives would laugh if I ever brought them this movie script. Yet we've gone from the world's greatest economic superpower to an Obama economy where Democratic leaders like Nancy Pelosi claim food stamps and unemployment benefits are economic activity. And in our final death throes under Obama, we've become the suicide economy. That's right. Americans are so happy and financially secure under Obama, they're committing suicide in record numbers. More people are now purposely killing themselves than die in car accidents for the first time ever. Obama is certainly an overachiever in that one category. How bad is the economy? Here are the stats the mainstream media is covering up. They don't want you to know that a month ago, California reported sales tax revenues plunged a shocking $539 million below expectations. That's over a half billion dollars in one state in one month. Does that sound like a recovery to you? The jobless rate rose in 44 states in July, including 9 out of 10 battleground states. And in August, it was just released a day ago, Nevada's unemployment, where I live, went back up past 12% again. Does that sound like a recovery to you? The American Petroleum Institute reports that U.S. consumer demand for oil and other forms of petroleum in July was the lowest since 1995. Does that sound like a recovery? Back to the future. The labor force participation rate for all workers is the lowest since 1981, but for men, it's the lowest in over half a century since 1948. Obama's campaign slogan is forward. When it comes to jobs, we're heading 55 years backward. Does that sound like a recovery to you? Help wanted ads have collapsed in back-to-back -back months, July, August, to the lowest level since the Lehman Brothers financial disaster. Does that sound like a recovery to you? And the final sobering stat is that 37,000 Americans are now committing suicide annually under Obama. More than die in car accidents for the first time ever. Does that sound like a recovery? And what does the mainstream media do in the face of all these facts? They not only bury them, but they've come out of the closet about their love and adoration for Obama. The media is openly working in unison to destroy Mitt Romney and ensure Obama's re-election. Such overtly biased media propaganda is something you'd expect in Cuba or Venezuela or Putin's Russia, but not in America. Rather than the media reporting on the Obama-created economic disaster facing Americans right now, it makes the number one news story a so-called secret tape with Mitt Romney honestly saying that the 47% of Americans who pay no taxes but collect checks from government are certainly less likely to vote for the candidate that wants to cut government and cut spending. That's it. That's what he said. At the same time, there's a complete media blackout on Obama's secret tape where he admits to supporting income redistribution. For those of you unfamiliar with the definition, that's socialism. This is an admission that should truly frighten all Americans and the media won't cover it. The fact that people collecting government checks don't want the checks to be reduced is not a revelation. The fact that Obama supports Karl Marx's idea of stealing from the business owners and the job creators to redistribute the stolen money to his voters is the real revelation. This is Obama's re-election plan. There it is in a nutshell. The media ignores that Obama was on Letterman and didn't know or care that the amount of the national debt. He didn't have any idea what it was. That's like a CEO not knowing the sales figures for his own company. You know what would happen to that CEO? Well, Donald Trump sums it up. You're fired. But the media doesn't care. 
The media gangs up on Romney with agreed upon questions at press conferences. They're thick as thieves, yet they have no questions for Obama about the Fast and Furious scandal that led to 300 deaths and the resignation of Obama Justice Department officials. It's Watergate with 300 dead people, including a U.S. border guard. They gang up on Romney for daring to question the U.S. policy in the Middle East or daring to criticize Obama's apology while our citizens were being murdered by angry Muslim mobs. Yet the media refuses to ask Obama why he did nothing about a possible attack on the U.S. Embassy in Libya, although he'd been warned about it three days before. Or why he's the last guy in the entire White House to know it was a planned terrorist attack. The media is clearly afraid. The truth might hurt their beloved Obama. They should be ashamed. Never has the media been so biased, one-sided, or obvious in their support of a candidate. It is embarrassing, it is sickening, it is disgusting. The fix is in. The media unapologetically supports the president presiding over both the suicide economy and the suicide of our Middle East policy. Maybe the media is just looking for sensational headlines. After all, if Obama is reelected, their job becomes so much easier because we can certainly expect many more headlines about suicide in the next four years. I'm Wayne Root for PersonalLiberty.com. See you next week, right back here, same time, same place. God bless.